we spoke last week, we found out about understanding about the importance of understanding the patterns of God. Very, very critical because when we understand the patterns of God, then we are able to understand how God deals with human beings and how God deals with you and how where you where you are in God's plan regarding you know his thought regarding you praise the lord and so we found out in the book of Isaiah uh, chapter number 46 verse number 9 uh, to 11 uh, where the bible tells us that God declares how things are going to turn out before they even happen God is a master planner praise god and he has an ability to go into each and every person's life, each and every agenda on planet Earth, make sure that he has completed the end, then he comes back to the front end of that deal and begins a process towards the destiny. And this is very important because that's how he deals with each one of us, amen. That's how, you know, your plan, you know, even before you are formed in the, in the womb of your mother, and we're gonna quote that scripture here in a little bit, that God knew, that you would be in America, amen? There was a testimony that was given by Sister Mary one time about you know, how she never ever thought that she would end up in America and how she, you know, she went through very, very difficult uh, situations in life, you know, selling things in the streets. And here she is, she's in America, praise the Lord. So God designed that in her life, even before she was formed in the womb of our mother, that there was a plan for her here in America, praise the Lord. Are we together? Amen. So God designed that uh, uh, even a plan for you. You know, you are never, you are not in America right now, you know, by any accident, praise the Lord. But you're here with a, this, with, a, with, a divine, with a divine purpose, praise the Lord. Those who have been spread out in many parts of, of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, the, of the earth, they are where they are because God designated that they be there at this particular moment. There are people who are living in Kenya and uh, maybe at some point, God will open up a way for them to come to America because God has, has designated their lives that way. But he has already finished and completed their ending and their story has already been completed. Even, and then God comes back up and begins a process. So that we, we talked a little bit about that and how God comes and creates a process you know, for us. Now, the process he creates, as we saw last week, uh, it goes on on his terms. Praise the Lord. You know, we never, ever say, okay, now that I'm in America, or some of you maybe went to the American embassy and they were denied a visa, and some of you never even had a, um, had a, um, a struggle, you know, getting that visa. It is because God had realigned everything so that you are in God's purpose. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So everything happens in God's terms. Everything happens on God's clock. Praise the Lord. There are people who have been waiting for God for many, many years, cried out to God. But God is taking you through the process of time. And if we can only be yielded to God, the key, the key area in our, our conversation here today is that we be yielded, our lives be yielded to the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is key because the moment we are yielded to the Lord, then we know that we are moving in, in his own uh, uh, timing, in his, in, in, his own, in, in his own clock. And then we are able to qualify the scripture that is in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11, The scripture that says that God has a wonderful and a perfect plan for each and every one of us. God doesn't have a plan for your failure. God doesn't have a plan for your, uh, for your downfall. And sometimes when we are going through the process of life, and you know, the school of life, there are some times when we encounter very difficult things in this life. And sometimes we feel, oh, you know what? My life is a failure. I won't even be able to, ac to accomplish anything. But if we are completely yielded to God and we are tuned up with God, then we are able to encourage ourselves just like David encouraged himself in the Lord, amen. Remember God had uh, uh, anointed David uh, many, many, uh, many, many years even before he was, uh, he was a grown up, he was a grown up, you know, he actually was anointed to be the king of Israel when he was still a young man. But his appointment came later, praise the Lord. So there's a difference with that. So the appointment had to take a process 
so that David would go through very difficult situations and circumstances. But the key thing about David, he was yielded to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Many times we know, we know his story, you know, how he was chased by Saul. But he knew the purpose of God had to be fulfilled at one time. And uh, the process wasn't easy. But David, even as he went through very difficult situations, he learned to encourage himself in the Lord. Praise the Lord. So along the journey, we are going to encounter very difficult things, my brothers and sisters. But it is very, very important for us to learn how to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Amen. When difficult situations and circumstances face us, when it could be maybe our children falling sick, when it could be maybe situations like maybe our parents maybe not, you know, being so sick and, and, and maybe some of us don't even have parents. How do you make it in this world without your parents? There are people who can tell us stories of how they've made it without their, their parents, how God has supernaturally provided their way through even in this life without that guidance that you need from a parent. So it is the, the, way of the, the, the way of the earth that God creates and designs a process for each and every one of us. Those processes that the Lord designs and creates for each one of us, they are custom made and they are not equal. You know, your, your process is not, does not resemble the process of another one. Amen? There's some, 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 somebody's process that will call for them to be patient and wait upon the Lord until he comes. There's somebody who is going maybe through pain or the process of suffering. It is still a process that God uh, puts you in, but, but, but you know what? God is so faithful and careful that he will not cause you to suffer beyond the limit whereby you are not, you're not going to be able to sustain. Even in the times of old, people went through a lot of suffering. David himself went through a lot of suffering. The people in the Bible, most of them through went a lot of suffering. But it is you being yielded to God and, and having enough trust in the Lord and knowing that even though I go through very difficult situations and circumstances, that the Lord has the ability to get me out of my quagmire. That the Lord has an ability to navigate me through the process of life. And there are going to be times when I feel like, like I cannot make it. There are times when I'll feel that the Lord maybe like the Lord is carrying me on his back taking me on the sojourning on the journey of life. Praise the Lord. We are going to come to the text uh, that um, uh, the text of today. And this is found in the book of Exodus, chapter number two, uh, verse number 23 to 25. I just want to emphasize what we have been talking about, that God, understanding the patterns of God, that how God creates his patterns, that he goes to the far end to finish and seal up the deal, then comes up in the front end and begins and designs a process for human beings. Praise the Lord. So in the book of uh, Exodus chapter number two, verse number 23, we are gonna read that, um, we are gonna read that uh, portion of scripture. And I'm sorry we don't have, today we are having a, we are, we are struggling uh, having the scriptures for those who are in the church, uh, having the scriptures on the screen. But you can open up your Bible. And I, I believe also you have your notebook and we can, you, can, you can note this if you don't have, uh, uh, somewhere to write. Uh, maybe it's, it's important to have a note, a notebook, so that you can jot this down and you can be able to benefit even uh, maybe along the way. So the Bible talks of now it happened in the process of time. Again, see the process in the process of time. It is noted there in that text. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of e Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage. And they cried out, and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. Verse number 24. So God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, and with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God acknowledged them. Now, this is a portion of the scripture, and when you read it, instantly what you, what you receive. What do you perceive in your spirit? You perceive that the, that the, the children of Israel uh, are really, really under tight pressure, under bondage, under slavery, and they are crying out to God. Maybe they're even fasting. Maybe they have called all the assembly of, of themselves to call upon the name of the Lord. And because of their cry at this very moment, you, you have a perception or you have an idea that the Lord heard them. Okay, and it is true, he heard them. But if we backtrack 
God already gave a prophetic, a prophetic message to our patriarch, and his name is Abraham. If you go in the book of Genesis, chapter number 15, verse number 13, praise the Lord. This was a period 400 years before this scripture is written. Praise the Lord. And you find a conversation uh, between the Lord and Abraham. And this is what it says in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter number 13. I hope you can write it down since we, we um, uh, for those who are, who are following, you know, on, online, you'll be able to see those scriptures written down there in the book of Genesis, chapter number 13, uh, verse, uh, I mean, Genesis 15, 13. Then he said to Abraham, know suddenly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them. And they will and and they will afflict them for four hundred years. Praise the Lord! Now this is God having a conversation with their forefather. Praise the Lord! Amen. And this was like four hundred years. The Lord is having a conversation with Abraham, and he's already gone four hundred years ahead of the children of Israel. Most of them actually were not even. Most of them, are, to, to be honestly. To be honest, none of them was even born. Praise the Lord. But Jesus, I mean, the Lord is having a conversation with Abraham and is telling him the, the series of events 400 years later. Praise the Lord. And he's telling them that there will be strangers in the land that is not theirs and they will serve them and they will afflict them for 400 years. Verse number 14. And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out with great possessions, praise the Lord. So the Lord already sees 400 years, you know, later, and that is how he sees, and that's how the Lord works. So he goes and completes, he completes the end. He already sees how they are going to, they are going to be under pressure. He sees how they are going to be under bondage. All this suffering that the children of Israel are suffering, what we read in the book of, um, I believe what we read in the book of Exodus, the Lord was already aware of, of what they were going to encounter. Praise the Lord. And this is, you know, when you read this, you, you are at ease because you know, wherever you are in life, God is guiding you. Wherever you are in life, God is under control. Praise the Lord. There are some times when we have these things in our minds and a debate going on in our minds and wondering, is, is the Lord really involved in my life at this very moment? And the answer to that question is, yes, he is involved in your life at that very moment when you feel like you are stuck between a hard place and a, and a, and a, and a, and a, and a, and a solid rock, when, when you feel like you cannot move on the left, when you feel you cannot move on the right, the Lord is aware of everything. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It gives me the confidence, you know, about the scripture, knowing that the Lord had already, after having this conversation with Abraham, you know, the Lord already had seen their exit out of Egypt, praise the Lord. You know, back, uh, I think it was uh, probably maybe a few years ago, you remember that um, there was an uprising in the, in the north, in the, in the Far East, in the Middle East, whereby, you know, the oppressive government, people rose against the oppressive governments, and there was a revolution that took place, you know? And, and you, know, you, you know, for those who... Those of you who follow news, their, their leaders actually were ejected out of their government because of such a revolution. You remember those days. Now, the coming out of the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt was not a revolution, praise the Lord. It was not even a rebellion. They never rebelled, rebelled against the, the rulers of Egypt, praise the Lord. There wasn't even negotiations or, or interactions, you were, you know, or a debate. Do we, do we now come out of, of, of this? Do we release them? Yes, I know when Moses was there and trying to, you know, um, go back and forth with Pharaoh of the day, you know, it's like, it, it seemed like it was a negotiation. But as far as God was concerned, the children of Israel, no matter what, they were going to come out. Praise the Lord. Amen. And God used, was using that process. Number one, remember what we talked about last week, that whatever God does while he is creating that process for you, he must receive the glory. Amen? Even the plagues that are being brought and wrought over the nation of Egypt, there was a number of them. In fact, if you read the scriptures, 
The Bible says that uh, the Lord himself intended that the heart of Pharaoh may be hardened. Praise the Lord. And the more, the, uh, the more his heart was, uh, was hardened, the greater the opportunity or the more opportunity the Lord had to reveal who he was to this, uh, to this great uh, Pharaoh of Egypt. Praise the Lord. And also the people of Egypt. They had to come to a realization of who Jehovah was. Praise God. Amen. And throughout all these situations and the plagues that are happening in the nation of Egypt, the Lord preserved his people. Praise the Lord. And I love what Mama, our mom, Mama Joshua, was telling us, like, you know, uh, last week that, you know what, as long as you're a child of God, we can trust the Lord even when there's a plague for the Lord for his sustenance. Praise the Lord. Well, if the Lord has not said that it is your time, I believe with the whole of my heart, it is not going to be your time. Amen. Even during those times when there was plagues, you know, um, we read in the scriptures that there were flies, that there were locusts, you know, in the camp of the Egyptians, in the homes, and they experienced those plagues. While in Goshen, everything, life was going on as normal. Praise the Lord. So this is how God is able to preserve his people. Praise God. And so this is how God does it. And, and it is it's just awesome, awesome in, a, in, a, you know, in our hearing that the Lord already pre-knew what was going to happen to the children of Israel. It is not even as a story. And the Lord is also not reacting. It is not, the Lord is not coming to deliver the children of Israel as a consequence of them crying out at that very moment. The Lord, yes, heard them, but he is not coming to deliver them as a consequence, as a consequence of their crying at, to, you know, to him at that very moment. This is already a design by God plan. Praise God. Your life has a design in it. Praise God. And wherever you are going, whatever you're going through right now, I want to encourage you, my brother and my sister, that God is in it. It gives me the confidence to know that no matter what I'm going through, that the, that the devil has no authority to take out my life because I know that God is involved in my life. Praise God. God is involved with my family. God is involved with my children. God is involved with my marriage. God is involved with my career. God is involved in everything that is connected to me. He is leading me. He is guiding me. He is showing me the way. Amen. I am on a process that is God ordained and things will have to happen when God says so. Praise God. Let me tell you, when God shows up in your life, you know, you don't even have to advertise yourself. Sister Mary, when people knew that you came to them, to the United States of America, after going through what you had gone through, you know what? They gave God the glory. They said, they must have said, there must be God in heaven if, our, if Sister Mary has gone to the United States, praise God. There are certain things that will happen in your life that when, when people know what has happened with you, they will know for sure there is a God in heaven and there's a God that is being served by sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Is, there, is, this, is, it, is that blessing you? Praise the Lord. In the book of Acts, chapter number seven, it's just, you know, uh, repeating what we just read. In the book of Acts, chapter number seven, verse number six to seven, it says, but God spoke in this way that, that, his, that his descendants would sojourn in a foreign, in a foreign land and that they would bring them into, into bondage and oppress them 400 years. And the nation to whom they will, they will be in bondage, I will judge. And God said, and after that, they shall come out and serve me in this place. Praise the Lord. God has a plan, beloved. Now, you come to the life of Moses. And Moses comes into the picture. You know, you remember how Moses was born? There was actually murder that was going on. The murder of the firstborns. Amen. Moses was part of that promise. And think, just look at the beauty and, the, and how God just orchestrate okay, things. That Moses, you know, is born. And uh, at that time, because the, 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 the Pharaoh of the day, the, the, the leadership in Egypt thought that the, the children of Israel were multiplying, you know, in great numbers. And they were scared that they would come and overthrow their government, you know, sooner or later. And so there was a decree that was, that was offered when Moses is born for all firstborns to be, to be killed. And Moses' mom, after, you know, he gave birth to, um, uh, to Moses, 
you know, God gives, gives her an idea. She tells her, why don't you make a basket after you win her, you know, put, it, put her into a river. Somehow she trusted that the Lord will protect her, you know. And, and think about how, how the Lord, you know, um, and we know this story, how, you know, the basket flows and, 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 and Moses is, uh, the, the Pharaoh's daughter is bathing and uh, she sees a basket and in it was, a, was this little Moses she didn't even know. Uh, and, and then she takes Moses and she declares that Moses was going to be, you know, my child. Amen. See how God's beautiful process of his time, God at this moment, he has pointed at, at Moses and he says that this is going to be the deliverer of the children of Israel, maybe, uh, maybe 80 years later. Praise God. At this point, maybe the years were almost maybe like 320 after the word of the Lord, after, after God had had, had had a conversation with Abraham. And so this little baby is born. And so, uh, it, you know, and it's taken by Pharaoh's daughter. There's a reason for everything that happens in life. The reason why Moses is taken into Pharaoh's home and grown, grows up there is so that he can understand the ways of Pharaoh and how Egypt operates because God was gonna use it in some years to come as he uses him to deliver the children of Israel, amen? And so he's, he's taken by the Pharaoh's daughter and you know the story. And guess what? Pharaoh's daughter realizes, oh, you know what? I, I cannot nurse this, this little boy. So he, he sends his servants and, and go find me an Egyptian woman, you know, who can take care of Moses. And guess what? The, the lady goes out and finds Moses' mom. If this is not a miracle, it's not even a coincidence. It's all God orchestrated, amen? And so Moses' mom gets the opportunity of raising up her child without any fear of Moses being, being killed, amen? Hallelujah. God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. And so Moses grows up in Pharaoh's house. He gets to age. He learns everything. I believe he goes to the best schools. I believe he is educated about the ways and the, and, and, and the Egyptian ways. And he, I mean, he goes to the best schools because he was raised up in the house of Pharaoh. He had the best experience being a leader and how to approach Pharaoh and, and the ways of, the, of, of Egypt because God was going to use his experience. And he stayed in the house of Pharaoh at one point. So a time comes, and you know, Moses kills an Egyptian, an Egyptian, and so he flees and stays in a in a in a des desperate, I mean, in a in the wilderness for 40 days. God knows that he will use the experience of the wilderness as he delivers the children of Israel as they go to the promised land. Amen. And so Moses sends him to take care of his father's. Uh, his father's, uh, his uncle's uh, uh, heart. And while there, that's where God comes and speaks to Moses. Praise the Lord. Moses has this experience. I mean, he is just a shepherd in the wilderness. And you know what? When the Lord, uh, he finds the, the burning bush while he is taking care of his father's heart, he approaches it. And um, he begins a, a relationship with God at that moment. When God tells him, Hey, Moses, Moses, I would like you to be the deliverer of the children of Israel. And notice, you know, the conversation between God and Moses at this time. It is not a good conversation. Moses says, I don't feel like I qualify to be the, the deliverer of the children of Israel. But do you think God cared about that? No, because God had already prepared him in advance. He was part of the plan. Amen. Moses may have not felt like he was not able to be the right deliverer of the children of Israel, but God has had designated him. He was part of the plan of delivering the children of Israel. Amen. And God was going to do whatever it took to strengthen Moses because he had prepared him right before he was even born. Praise the Lord. There are certain things, brothers and sisters, that you don't feel like you are able to do. You've been maybe told by the Lord you are supposed to do this and that, and you felt, Lord, I'm not able to do this. But God knows that he is, you are part of that plan to accomplish his purpose. And God is going to do whatever he will do with you to strengthen you and to give you courage so that you can do it because he has called you. right? He knew you even before you were born. You are formed in the womb of your mother. Praise the Lord. So when God comes to strengthen you, it is good and important for you to cooperate with him. Amen? 
just like Mary. Mary wasn't, you know, Mary, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. You know, she never thought that she would be the mother of Jesus. Praise the Lord. But she says, Lord, if it is you, if you, if you've really anointed me, if you, if I mean, if you found, you know, that I'm worthy, Lord, I'm ready. I'm here. Praise the Lord. Use me. You know, Mary never thought that she would be the mother, of the, the the mother of Jesus. How would it be that a woman like me, you know, a woman that I've never, you know, met a man before, that I'll carry the savior of the whole world? Let me tell you. Sometimes we look down on ourselves. Sometimes we don't feel like we match up. Sometimes we feel like we are not able to carry the responsibilities that God has given us. But I want to encourage you that you have what all that it takes to be to be a servant of God, to be one that God uses to accomplish even major projects for the Lord. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. You have what it takes. You know, Moses had just a shepherd's stick. Praise the Lord. And believe it. I mean, just think about this. A shepherd's stick. I don't even know where, from what tree Moses had cut that shepherd's stick. Maybe he had picked it up just on the ground. But God decided to use what he was in his hand to actually go show up and, and to allow God to show off in Pharaoh's state. Praise God. Amen. And you know how the miracles that God used in what Moses had. So you have all that, you, all that God wants to use through you is within you. Amen. It is within you, my brother and sister. If you're a songwriter, it is all in you. All you need to do is present yourself before the Lord and the Lord is going to strengthen you and it will come out, praise the Lord. There are some of you that are God has called to be preachers. There are some of you that God has called to be encouragers. And But when you look at yourself, you feel like I don't even qualify, amen? Moses, you know, went back with the Lord, back and forth with the Lord, telling him, Lord, I'm a man slow of speech. Lord, I've never stood before people. You know, Lord, how, what, who am I going to tell them sent me? He, he had all these doubt issues in his, in his heart. He had all these belief issues in his heart. Amen. And the Lord continued to encourage him because the Lord looks at the heart of a person. Amen. When the Lord looks at your heart, he says that I see somebody who can carry my mission to the nations. When the Lord looks at you, he says, I see a brother who can lead worship you know, into big churches, praise the Lord, and lead masses to the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is beautiful. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we see Moses, uh, God is taking him into the wilderness, and into the wilderness, he is preparing himself. He is preparing him to, um, uh, on, the, on the mission of leading the children of Israel through the wilderness. For 40, 40 years, he was there. Praise the Lord. And so God, you know, comes and uses him. He even actually raises, um, you know, Aaron to be with him. Praise the Lord. And um, it is just an amazing story that your life has already be, be, be uh, he, it, uh, your life has already be predetermined. God knows your ending. If, and now you're, through, you're going through the process as you get to that destination. Now enter uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah in the book of Jeremiah, chapter number one. Verse number five, what we read about Jeremiah, the Bible says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, praise the Lord. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. You can say that to yourself too, that before I was formed in the womb of my mother, my, my, my God and my Lord knew me, praise the Lord. He even knew that I was going to be called Tony. He even knew that you're going to be called Mary. He even knew that you're going to be called Sister Leah. You, he knew that you're going to be called Catherine. He knew you, praise the Lord. The Lord knew each and every one of us before we were formed in the womb of our mother. And before you were even born, I consecrated you. I mean, if God is speaking the same to, to, to this young prophet who is even almost having doubt about himself, you know, in the beginning when you read the book of Jeremiah, it is important for us to know that God for knew each and every one of us before we were formed in the, in the womb of our mothers. And not only knew us, but he consecrated us. He set us apart. That's what it means. He consecrated you. I appointed you to be a prophet for the nations. Amen. Amen. So before he was even formed, 
So think about the ingenuity of God. He is the, his ability to, to orchestrate things, you know, even in the future. Think about babies that are there right now that have not been born, but God has, God already knows them before they have been formed in the womb of their mothers. Amen. There are babies that are going to be born, actually, that we may not know, that will be prophets in the future should he tarry. Amen. There are babies who are, who are yet to be born that God has, has, knew, has known and has consecrated to be maybe leaders of America tomorrow. Amen. There are babies who have been born right now. Maybe you are here that God has set apart to be leaders in the world somewhere in the, in the, in the nations, you know, somewhere. Or maybe carriers of the gospel somewhere. You've been consecrated. Praise the Lord. God goes up to finish the ending before he begins the process. That even before we were born, the Lord knows us. Amen. Before the process of birth, before the process of conception, before the process of development. Oh, hallelujah. In the wombs of our mother, we come out of our mother when we are born special and designated and marked. Oh, hallelujah. I love this. That you are marked out for greatness. You are marked out to accomplish something. Even by the time you're being born, the Lord already ordained you. Oh, hallelujah. No, no child is born as an accident, but you have been ordered by the coffers of heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. No child is, not, is born here on earth if it's not ordered of heaven. Amen? You know, like when you order something from Amazon, they cannot send anything to you before you place an order, right? Have you ever received things that you've, 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 you've uh, have you ever received things in your home that you never ordered? You know, maybe from Amazon, unless maybe somebody ordered it for you. I know there were some times, you know, a very special sister was ordering some stuff for me, for us, and uh, I, I would receive some goodies and, and I would receive a phone call from her saying, hey, you know what? I ordered something for you, praise God. But you'll never receive something in your home that has not been ordered. Let me tell you, your life was ordered from heaven. Amen. You are not here by mistake. And the life you're leading even here is, is not by mistake. Praise the Lord. All we need to do is get yielded to God. And God is going to guide us because you've been ordered from heaven. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you have been ordered from heaven here? Lift up your hands. If you know you've been ordered from heaven, lift up your hands. Amen. You've been ordered from heaven. And you know what? You need to live your life with confidence, knowing that my life is ordained of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, what a beautiful story. I love this. Now let us bring in Abraham. Abraham was 75 years, and uh, I'm almost uh, going to come to a close here very shortly. Uh, Abraham, remember when God gave him an, uh, of a, uh, the promise of a, of a child, he was 75 years old. Uh, he was 75 years of age. And this is noted in the book of Genesis, chapter number 20, uh, Genesis chapter number 12. You know, when the Lord, you know, brings him out and tells him, you know, I'll bless you. You know, if you can number the stars in heaven, blah, 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 then you can be able to, to, to number your generation. Now, remember, at 75, you know, Abraham, as we all know, didn't have a child. For 25 years, 25 Oh, my goodness. Remember, he was given a prophetic promise by the Lord that I will give you a promise and you will have a son. And through your son, you know, you, your generations will be so plentiful in the world. Amen. And there's sometimes, you know, I'm thinking about this. We are given a prophetic word and sometimes we, we stay with it maybe a month. We stay with it maybe two months. We stay with it maybe three months, six months, one year. And you see, you know, we come to almost thinking that, ah, uh, I think maybe that promise was not meant for me. Hallelujah. Think of a man who was given a promise and he stays with that promise for 25 years. Amen. And because Abraham was a man like us, you know, at some point he comes to the Lord and he tells him, oh, you know what? Um, I don't think this was really meant for me. Maybe Lord. Lord, I think maybe you meant that Eliezer, Eliezer was his servant. Maybe this is the man that you wanted me to, to inherit, to inherit, to be my inheritance, so that maybe you'll propagate my generation through him. But do you think that is exactly what the Lord told him 
in Genesis 12. He told him that it will be your son, praise God. And sometimes, let me tell you, 1,000, you know, God's timing is not like our timing. God doesn't work with, with our clock, amen? And sometimes it might tarry for a long, long time. Oh, goodness, I really feel for, for Abraham waiting this long. It got to a point, actually, hey, guy, I mean, uh, uh, Sarah thought, ah, I'm almost uh, 99 years old, and now I don't think I can even conceive, you know? And you know what? I wouldn't even blame Sarah, mom. I wouldn't even blame her. Which woman would not would blame Sarah? At 99, you know, you know that her fallopian tubes maybe have closed up. You know, every everything within our system, it, you know, tells her that you cannot conceive. But we serve a mighty God. We serve a miraculous God. He can take nothing. He can create, you know, something out of nothing. Praise God. That is the God we are supposed to. I mean, when we think about what God has spoken to us, we can be reminded of this story of Abraham and Sarah, that at 100 years, at 99 years, that the God of heaven was able to strengthen their womb, was able to strengthen their bodies to conceive a child, praise God, amen? And we know the story of Abraham and, and, uh, and Sarah. You know, they, they almost... Um, you know, they, 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 they cut corners, you know. I mean, it was too long for a time for that promise to be waited upon. And they started cutting corners. Oh, you know what Sarah tells Abraham? Oh, I think now at this stage, I cannot even get a, a, get a child. Why don't you take my servant, hey guy, go sleep with her and the child that you get, that will still be your child, Abraham. And look like a nice idea, right? It would look like a nice idea to me, by the way. It would look like a nice idea because I would think, I, I'm almost 100 and she is 99. I, I think maybe I never heard from the Lord. You know, there are moments like that when we feel like, I, I didn't feel, I don't think I heard from the Lord. But my beloved, I want to encourage you that you really heard from the Lord. Amen? Stay with the promise. Stay with the prophetic word. It will come to pass. Write it down. Amen? Hallelujah, it will come to pass. And you know what? The fact that they even cut corners, did that stop the plan of God from happening? Did that stop the plan of God from happening? No, God really stayed true to his word. That even after Abraham got Ishmael with Haggai, the Lord still fulfilled his word, strengthened the womb of, of uh, his, 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 his beautiful wife, Sarai, and Abraham as well, and they got their Isaac. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us wait for that Isaac. It might be 25 years down the road, but that Isaac will surely come if the Lord spoke it. Amen. It was part of the plan. Praise the, praise the Lord. Now enter Joseph. Amen. The life of Joseph. Look at Joseph. The Lord looked at the, 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 the kindred of, of Jacob, and he knew that there was going to be drought in, in Egypt and that they needed, they needed supply of food and they needed to move. This was also part of the process of the children of Israel getting into Egypt, just as he has spoken to Abraham. And God uses all kinds of settings so that he can fulfill his grand plan. Amen. Your grand plan in America, maybe you may not even realize it. Maybe it's so that you can help somebody back in Kenya. Maybe it's so that you can help a widow in Kenya, which you're already doing, praise the Lord. Amen? And look at what Joseph did. Joseph was one of the youngest uh, among his brothers, praise the Lord. And, um, you know, you know they, they just had jealous. I mean, it's amazing. You can say God uses jealous. At this point, you know, he caused there to be a hatred between the brothers, and so he hated they, they, they almost killed, you know, Joseph. But Joseph could not die because he had a mission, praise the Lord. And he was uh, uh, one of, uh, you know, the, 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 the beloved sons of his father. Amen. And so Joseph, we know the story how, you know, the brothers put him in a pit, you know, and some Ishmaelites came and, you know, sold him out. And uh, he was a dream, dream uh, interpreter. And they take him into, into Egypt. And as they go into Egypt, actually, they take him into 
you know, uh, a leader's house. What was the name of that leader where they took him? Potiphar, right? Potiphar was where they took him. And look what happened. Because Joseph was in tune with God. Joseph's life was yielded to God. And this is the key thing, key phrase that I keep on emphasizing here. The key phrase is being yielded to God, being aware that I serve a mighty God, that I cannot compromise, that I cannot serve other gods, that I cannot move from any other way. I know God and no one can change my, my, my thinking about him. I, no one can change my belief about God. That's what I'm talking about, he being yielded to God. Amen? And so Joseph is taken and into Potiphar because of how he loved God. You know, and Potiphar's wife, you know, Satan arranged that he would, he would, he would entrap, ent entrap uh, Joseph through Potiphar's wife. But he passed the test. And because of that, he is taken into prison. How many of you know that sometimes you will suffer for what you've done, which is good? Sometimes you will suffer for not compromising. Amen? Sometimes you will lack because of not compromising. But that is a benefit because God has a, a beautiful plan. If you, if you go through that test and succeed, God has a beautiful plan at the end of the day. Amen? And it may not be material blessings that we all expect maybe from this earth, but you, 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 you gain affirmation from the Lord. Amen? You remember the story of, of God, I mean, the testimony that God had of a job? He said, you know, that is my man that is blameless. And, and you know what? He, there's no one like him. And so God gives, gives permission to the devil to go torment him because God knew that you, you know, that you receive glory out of the life of Job, praise the Lord. So when we don't compromise, God receives the glory. And that is more than material blessings that we can ever, we can ever receive. God getting the glory out of the, your life, my brother and sister, is more than the material wealth that you can ever receive in your life. If God speaks about you, Sister Mary, and says, I know there's a sister in Pony that I can depend upon. Oh, hallelujah. That is more than gold. That is more than anything that you can ever have here on earth. He says that I, I know of, a, of my son who lives in Ghana. His name is Joel. And I know that he is blameless. And I know that he stands for me. That is more, my brother Joel, more than any gold that you can ever have here on earth. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. And so Joseph, he went to jail because of doing right. And he's stuck there. And you know the story of how the Lord even used him in prison. He is made a leader there. But God had a plan. You know, he is in the grand plan of the Lord regarding the children of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. And so he is there, but God has appointed him to be the leader in Egypt. Hallelujah. And so the process of time carries. God still has custom made the design, the plan of, of Joseph and his family. And ultimately, we know how the story ends up. He becomes the prime minister of Egypt. Praise God. And now he has the ability, God-given ability. That's why we need to pray that we, we fit in God's plan in our lives. Because as wherever God takes you, whether it be in a career, whether it be in business, God intends for you to, to be placed there as a stronghold for God so that you can execute his wisdom to the other people. Praise the Lord. There's not a reason. It's not for nothing that God has given you a business so that you can be fair to your employees. Praise the Lord. How many businesses do you know people, you know, trend down or people, they don't pay them right. They mistreat their workers. They mistreat their employees. Amen. God would want us to take us to places whereby if God gives you a position of power, a position of authority, that you will be representing God in wherever he places you. If you're a nurse, that you will do the work of a nurse representing Christ in all that you do, praise the Lord. If God has made you um, maybe an accountant, God has made you, whoever that God has placed you along the journey of faith that you will represent him, Authenticity, there'll be authenticity in your life. And that everybody who comes to you, everybody who comes by you will say, surely there's a God in heaven because of how this sister has treated me, because of how this brother has treated me. Praise the Lord. May I be a businessman. May I be a pastor that when people come that I serve, 
that they will say, surely there's a man, there's a God in heaven. If that man is an angel, he cheated me. Amen. Some guys were doing some job for me back in Kenya, and um, they were doing a, a very difficult job, you know, in a, in a, 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 some charity work we were involved in with my sister. And um, uh, these people were, were, were actually digging latrines, okay? And uh, for those of you who know digging latrines, how difficult it is. So they, they told me that, um, you know, this, the, 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 the way we are digging this latrine is very, very difficult because there's rocks. And, and, and so they pleaded with the, the person who was in charge of the finances, please, can you add us some money? Because we are really, really doing a lot of work. And they had to dig almost 45, 45 feet. And um, so they did this work, but the person who was responsible to help them with the money said, well, I mean, we made an agreement. That's how much you're supposed to pay you. So that's it. So I had an opportunity for them to dig another latrine, you know, another pit, you know, uh, this young man, they had another opportunity. And I went there when I was in Kenya, they were digging in a deep pit, you know, so that they can hold some water, dirty water somewhere. And so I went and I said, oh my goodness, people really that do this work, they deserve to be paid a lot of money because it's hard work. I mean, you're talking of Kwarev Mawe, you know, the, the, the stones that are, that are in the hole, they are trying to dig it and they have to use a bucket to bring it out. And I said, you know what? I'm not gonna do like what, what, what you have done in that other deal. I'm gonna add you some money because if, you, if this is what you did, I, I felt like I could not be unfair to this young man, you know? Because they had given themselves and their energy to do that work, amen? So God is gonna place us in positions whereby you feel like as you deal with other people, is this fair? Is this what Jesus will do to these people? Amen. Hallelujah, are you listening to me? Because you're representing Jesus in whatever you are. My goodness, never look down on what you do because even if it is taking care of somebody that you're taking care of, you are representing Jesus at that very moment. Amen. Amen. You know, we do business. My wife and I, we, we do some business, but we made it, uh, um, uh, we made it our life, uh, what? Um, like a decision, a business decision. Like when we deal with people and deal with their money, that will be 100% honest with them. And we will do it as we are doing it for us. So um, we don't do it thinking that it is to our own advantage if we are doing something that will benefit us if it is not gonna benefit them. It has to benefit them. It is like a policy that we put down and we say it has to benefit them first before it benefits us, praise God. And through that, I've seen God blessing, blessing the work of our hands, praise the Lord. So whatever you do, do it thinking, how can it benefit that other person? Because that's exactly what Jesus would want it to happen. He would have to benefit that other person before it benefits you. And in doing so, we are representing Christ, praise the Lord. And so our destiny will be great. Am I talking to somebody? So God uses Joseph and ultimately, you know his story. He ends, he ends up becoming a prime minister of the nation of Israel. And so he goes back and he calls his brothers. His brothers come looking for food because there was drought as well as in Egypt. And I would like you to mark the words that Joseph spoke to his brothers when they realized who he was because they were so terrified that they were going to be killed by, by Joseph. This is exactly what he told them in verse Genesis chapter number 50, verse number 20. Genesis 50, verse number 20. That's what he, to, he told them. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Hallelujah. Just behold the beauty of that statement that you intended to harm me. So in other words, he's telling them, do not be scared. I'm not going to harm you. You did, you meant it for evil, taking me into, into the pit so that I could die, lack oxygen, lack food, and so I'd be dying. But God had a wonderful plan because he sent some Ishmaelites on my way, picked me up, sent me into Potiphar, put into prison, later became the prime minister so that I could save Many lives, not only your lives, but many lives in Egypt. Hallelujah. And I see, Mo, you know, Joseph saying, 
at the words, maybe even if it's not written, that before you were born in your mother's womb, I knew you, I appointed you, I consecrated you to be a savior of many people in Egypt and in Israel. Hallelujah. You can put your name there. Before you were born by your mother, before you were even conceived, I, I ordained you, I consecrated you to be this and that in America, to be this and that in Kenya, praise the Lord. The Lord has already seen your ending. And so do not give up as you walk towards that ending because at the end of the day, number one, God is going to get the glory. Number two, God is, God is going to get there. Number three, God is going to sustain you throughout the journey. It might be hard. I didn't say it, it's going to be easy. It might be hard, but God is going to ordain it for you. Amen? You may have to be put in a prison like Joseph, but at the end of the day, God is going to see you through. Amen? I talked about Job, so I'm not going to talk about that. I will finally talk about Nehemiah. I think I'll be done with Nehemiah. Enter Nehemiah. We can even talk about David. Amen. Think about the walls of, of, a, of a, uh, the, the, the desolate walls of Jerusalem. Amen. You think about Nehemiah serving a king. I mean, who wouldn't be comfortable just being a cupbearer of the king? And many times, you know, God brings us into positions of power, into positions of authority. And I mean by saying that if you're in America, whatever job you're doing in America, you are already in a position of power and a position of influence. As you have stepped your feet in this beautiful nation, you are already influential. Can you turn to somebody, tell them, I'm influential. Oh, my goodness. You don't believe it? You are influential. If you want to know that you're influential, you know when you take a visit to Kenya, how people regard you so highly. They respect you. They know that you uko maju. Mbano na julika na uyo ni shoshu wa maju. Uyo ni antu wa? Sindio? You are influential. You being here because God has stepped you into the greatest nation on earth. Amen. Whatever you do, you are in a place of influence. Praise the Lord. And who wouldn't just want to settle when you're in a position of influence? I don't need to do anything. It is my life, myself, and I. But this was not the case for Nehemiah. When he heard that the walls of Jerusalem were desolate, he had to do something. Amen. Very, very critical. When you've heard about somebody who is suffering in another nation that you know that you are in, a, in an ability to help, do not withhold your help from those because that's why it could be, it could be by chance that it is the reason why God brought you so that you could be a place of influence. Can I give you a testimony? <laughs> this is a good testimony. It happened to me. I've not even shared with my wife. I had an agreement the other day. And, and let me tell you, God is, is a God of humor, okay? I had a testimony. I had a, an agreement with my sister. You know, there the, are the things that she was to call me and, and, and talk to me about, but she, you know, it, it, it was, it was um, we agreed that she would call me uh, like uh, during her daylight time. And so it forced me to wake up at one so that she would tell me what was going on because it's something that we, we, we had made an, an arrangement. And I told her, yeah, you can wake me at one. And so we can have this conversation because we needed to, to, to talk, you know, at that very hour and we could not postpone it. So I went with my phone. Usually I leave my phone in my office back at home because I when, when somebody calls me at night, I can't go back to sleep again. So I was prepared. Well, I guess this is very important so we can talk with my sister. Even if I don't go back to sleep, it will still be okay since I had you know, decided to do this. And guess what? At 1.30, out of the blue, somebody calls me that we have not spoken for a long, long time. Okay, and he had tried to call me but I, saw, I thought in my heart, ah, I, I already know maybe what he wants. Maybe he wants money from me. So, you know, just like we all say, you know, you know, at one that this brother calls me. And guess what? I'm waking up thinking it's my sister. And I'm saying, hello, 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 hello. You with all the sleep and all that. And I check and I hear the voice on the other end. It is this young brother. And I said, oh, my goodness. Why is he calling me at this hour? I told him not to call me at this hour. And at that very moment, I've not even shared this with Catherine. 
the Lord told me, I put that young man in the line because he has been trying to call you and he needs your help. Amen. Amen. So, and I thought it was my sister. You know, I mean, I don't even make uh, appointments, you know, for anybody from Kenya to call me at night because I don't want, I mean, you don't want to call somebody when they are asleep, you want them to enjoy their sleep, right? So, but this young man called me and I told him, okay, uh, I'm not in my right way to converse with you. Can we talk in the morning? And let me tell you, my sister never called, you know? And so in the morning, it was yesterday actually, yesterday morning. So this young man used to work in our home many, many years ago, but he's a young man, he's kind of like our brother because he grew, he grew working in our home. So, you know, kind of like, you know, those people who work in your homes and they become part of the family. So he calls me and he's telling me how he has gone through a very difficult time and uh, how he planted his maize, I thought, oh no, potatoes. They were all burned because of the rain and so he needs help from me. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So I felt the Lord telling me, you have to help. Amen. The reason why I'm saying it this is because the Lord will cause things to happen in your life. And sometimes you're throwing, throwing them aside but God has he submitted to test you to see if you can help out somebody who is in need. Amen. And who knows what will come after I help this brother. He doesn't really need a lot of money, Joel. I mean, I told you we are in a places of influence. If, if you're here, you can afford $100 and bless somebody. That will be maybe a startup business in Kenya, by the way. And maybe that's all he needs. He has a, he has a wife, he has a child. And so I said, I mean, if we... We, I, we went to Kenya and helped many other families that we don't know. This young man is just asking, he's not even asking for money to, to waste. He's telling me that they have been going without food and I really, that really touched me. And so I told him, yeah, I'm gonna help you. We're gonna help you. We're gonna work it out. I asked him, what do you wanna do? He told me, you know, and it's not a lot of money. So God has a way of, of connecting things and to catch your attention, amen? So it happens to Nehemiah. And he said, you know what? He had to be the one to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Now, remember, there's going to be Sandibalas, there's going to be Tobiases, but as long as you are yielded to God, God is going to take care of the Tobiases and the Sandibalas. I'm just paraphrasing this because I'm assuming that you know the story of Nehemiah. And eventually, was he able to build the wall? Was he able to build the wall? He actually built the wall under two months because God intended for him to build a wall, praise the Lord. So I would encourage us, as I conclude, I would encourage each one of us to know that God, that those are the patterns, understanding the patterns of God is very, very critical in our lives because when you understand them, then you don't have to worry. All you have to do is just stay put, like King Jehoshaphat, you know, he was, uh, um, I mean, he was surrounded, he says, you know what? We are going to praise God. And this is exactly what the prophet says. And, and the, 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 the prophet comes and tells him, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. As I'm yielded to God, I feel that God is telling me, just walk with me. I am going to send the divine connectors for you who will propel me to the next places. I'm also going to line up people that will come and, 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 and so that you, I can test your faithfulness to me like I did yesterday. God was testing my faithfulness to see what I can bash this young man away. Praise the Lord. Amen. And who knows? I don't know. I'm not, I will not even be helping this young kid so that I can be blessed by God. But I know there's nothing that God, whatever you do, nothing you do for the Lord will ever go unrewarded. So this could be a test. And maybe when I pass this test, the Lord will open up many other doors. I don't even know. But God is capable of doing so. Amen. But even if he doesn't do it, then I'll, I'll be confident and I'll be, I'll be so happy that I was able to respond to the voice of God because I knew that it's exactly the voice of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So know that there's a process that you're going through, church. Know that there's a process that you're going through. And that process is not, the Lord has not promised that that process is going to be easy. The process might be hard. You know, you know uh, I mean, we, we saw Joseph was in prison. But he didn't stay in prison. There was an, ex, there was an entry day. There was a, a day of getting into prison and a day of getting out of prison. It was still part of the process. 
And it doesn't mean that because he was in prison, God incited him. As a matter of fact, God was with him in prison. Amen? So there's some of us maybe who are going without money right now. You don't know where to get the money, the finances or the source of finances. But some of you, some of us maybe who have denied maybe credit for your business. There's some of us maybe whose papers have delayed for so, for so long and you wonder, God, when are you going to open up this paper, this documentation so I can be free? My sister, my brother, I want to encourage you. It is part of the process. Trust me. And God knows you. God knows the case more than you do. Amen. And I'll pray that you be encouraged and do not compromise and do not give up your faith and do not quit prayer. Do not quit reading the word. Do not come into church. Do not quit even assembling in prayer when things are so hard because God has not deserted you. I'm telling you the truth, brothers and sisters. God has not deserted you. You know, maybe right now you're in prison, some type of a prison, and you're saying, Pastor, this doesn't make any sense what you're talking to me. But I'll tell you, if you went to Joseph at that time when he was in prison, it never made any sense. In fact, as a matter of fact, you know the story that, the, 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 he, he prophesied, you know, for somebody to come out of prison, and when he went up there, he forgot him. You know that story. He forgot him. That he was in prison. But God doesn't forget that you're in prison. That's a beautiful thing. Whatever he puts you in, he never forgets. Shall we stand on our feet, please? Amen. Hallelujah. I love sharing this word because it's, it's just beautiful. Amen. Heavenly Father, it's such an honor that we could come into this house that is called by your name. I thank you, Father, for each and every brother, each and every sister. Each and every child, Lord, who came to the house of the Lord, those that are at home right now. Heavenly Father, I don't know where we are in the process. And sometimes, you know, we might be wondering, Lord, even, even where I am is part of the process. But I tell you, as God's servant today, yes, it is part of the process. But God is the one who is able to convert, you know, to bring beauty out of ashes. He's able to look at those ashes and say what? You know what? These ashes that you see today, I will convert them into beauty through the process of time. You see these bones that don't have life? The Lord, the Lord is asking you if, you, if only you can prophesy to these bo dead bones that can come to life. I don't know what you are going through or what maybe somebody related to you is going through or what maybe something connected to you it is happening right now. And maybe it doesn't make any sense. Trust God's process. Trust God's process. He'll bring you out. He'll bring you out. It may take some time, but eventually he'll bring you out. Trust me. Father, I thank you, Lord, even for my brothers and sisters today. Lord, I pray that you ordered them from heaven and you didn't bring them out of heaven to earth to destroy any one of them. And therefore, Father, I pray that you help each one of us to fit, to first of all, number one, to be yielded to you and also to understand that you are, you're taking us through a process. And Father, that you may give us a glimpse of what is happening at every stage so that we can be prepared. And Lord, I thank you, Father, because we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us, as your word says. Your word also tells us that you will guide us and lead us and instruct us the way to go. And therefore, while we're in this process, we just want to love the process. We just want to not give up on you. We just want to not surrender our faith just because of the, of, the, of, the, of the intensity of the process, but rather, Lord, even to embrace it and to say like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that even though you throw us through the fire, we will not bow before you, King Nebuchadnezzar. They trusted the process so much to a point of, of, of even declaring to Nebuchadnezzar that even if the Lord does not rescue us from this fire, we know that we're in a process. And even should we die, we'll be in his presence. That is how much we need to, to love this process. And we see what God did to those, those Hebrew, Hebrew boys. He was with them in the fire. God is preparing to be with you in your process. Even in the intensity of the matter, even when things don't make any sense, he will be there for you in the name of Jesus. 
Therefore, Father God, we surrender our lives to you. May you guide us. May you direct our paths. We want to hear your voice every single moment. And thank you, Lord, where we've been proudful, where we've been unfaithful. Forgive us. We're human beings. You understand us, Lord. We are weak beings, Lord. And you do not surrender or give up on us because we have messed. Even Abraham messed around and they went and, 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 and compromised, Lord. But you still, when they, you still came through for them. Therefore, Lord, we ask you where we've messed around, forgive us. Take us back to the pen. Take us back to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to our lane that we may run this race without giving up. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Help us to love one another. Help us to be our brothers and sisters. Keep us along the journey because we need each other. We need to encourage one another to the glory and honor of your name. We thank you, Father, and we bless you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we appreciate the Lord? Joe. Amen. Uh, Albert. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Give Jesus your hand.